Good evening, young people. Welcome to the broadcast. Hey, God's got something special for you tonight. Amen. That's right. Uh, he's going to talk to you face to face. Ah. All right. And so uh, this particular lesson here, we're getting ready. We're right on top of the hump. Remember I told you yesterday how the roller coaster is? When she get ready, <laughs> when she get ready to start going down, you're going to start hollering. So, uh, so uh, bear with us tonight. So welcome to uh, the broadcast. Uh, Dr. Ella here. She's fooling around with her uh, her out. equipment, getting <laughs> everything straight to hear you guys' responses and all that good stuff. So, Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? I know you're full of wisdom. I know full that's what your wisdom. answer is. I'm full of wisdom. <clears throat> full God. of wisdom. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, welcome also to you uh, young people that uh, might be on for the first time tonight or from another uh, locale outside of this country. Uh, we bless you guys. Thank you for your time also. Uh, it's very interesting to uh, understand the power of wisdom, but it's, it's an adventure to walk in it yes. because it's something that we do every day. And if we expect it every day, you'll begin to see uh, the mind faculties that the enemy try to press against. You'll begin to see those begin to uh, fortify uh, the knowledge mm -hmm. and the presence and the love and all these things that you have for God, your mind will become very stable where you can yes. recognize and you can be able to walk in, in the knowledge of God, knowing that you're doing exactly what's right. Most of the time, people that are, they say they're being led by the Spirit of God, they have hesitancy, you know, sometimes even doubt, okay? Mm. But wisdom helps you to know exact. Amen. It gives you the privilege to make those steps to know that the decisions that you're doing, you're following the Lord God. And even though those decisions a lot of times involve uh, maybe losing things or letting some things go, but you know in your heart, okay, that that's what you need to do for this time because God's working out all things together for your good, okay? And so you have that peace inside of you that this is absolutely right. And you get over it and you keep on going. You take the next step. You may have to take the next hop. But whatever you have to do, you're going to take the next. We're not going back. Wisdom is always carrying us forward. Amen. Amen. All right? Amen. So, and tonight, um, are you going to read? Uh, you love to read, right? Mm -hmm. I do. You were the one that uh, invested in me reading. So, <laughs> I used to read all the hunting magazines. I had a stack of them by my bed. But uh, she used to read all the Bible books. <laughs> so, well, the Bible so, says to provoke so, unto good works. Yeah, so. she provoked me unto a good work. So, uh, so I'm into a good work now, all right? For Boy, many years, are. for yes, many years, yes, for many yes, years, all right? Praise God. For many years, all right. So we're going to get into this lesson tonight. Here we are, lesson 16. So we got 15 more now. And, uh, you know, I want you guys to gird yourself up because this is a great year. A, things are already happening. I mean, great things are already taking place. Amen. But we don't want them to be sporadic. We want them to be continuous, Amen. okay, all the time. And so this is why wisdom is so, so powerful and so important for us to get, all right? Amen. All right. Of Here we go. We start with a definition of wisdom, yes. which is accumulated learning that is able to discern inner, inner qualities, qualities by yep. a wise attitude, which challenges that which has been accepted. And I, I just would advise you that even though we learned it, but just meditate on that because yes. I, I find with myself as these lessons uh, intensify more and more, and I look at them and I meditate and I think about them, there is some really, really um, deep things in these lessons. So I advise you to dig deeper. Yes. Even, even dig further deeper. than what we're doing. I do advise you to <laughs> dig, dig deeper because there are some great there are some great wisdom lessons and just things that God wants us to know. Also, <clears throat> wisdom gives us the privilege to recognize both good and bad activity. I don't know of a time <laughs> where we need to know like now where we need to know truth or lies, <laughs> practical yep. or eternal lessons, something that's going to be calls you to be able to spend forever with the Lord. <clears throat> the two major themes surrounding a life of wisdom are the lessons about God and humanity yep. and the lessons that deal with the righteous and the wicked. Yes. To lack understanding of either of these, these two themes will cause you to miss the entire message of the Bible. You guys probably got that by now, right? Yes. If you do, let us know. I'd like to know how many people are actually getting this versus a lot of you guys that ain't saying nothing. <laughs> but they're saying they're, but a it's, lot of them are saying things. But it's just, it, it, within this, especially within the definition of wisdom, mm. right? There are a lot of things that we're gonna we're gonna pull out in the next next two weeks because 
That's a lot in here. It's a lot. Okay, it in, really within is. this. And it opens up your eyes, all right? Yes, Come right does. on, doll. And opens up your heart to Jesus. <laughs> yes. Wisdom gives us directional arrows as a roadmap to the treasures of God. Locate and follow the action verbs. Follow, follow. <laughs> and you know, as I, as I was um, looking over the lesson today, these direct, in this area, these directional arrows, like the natural directional arrows from DMV, can save your life yes. and at the same time protect Tick. others. Yes. Regulatory signs, warning signs, and temporary traffic control signs are listed all through Scripture. And I would advise you to just to meditate on Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 27. Hey. When you're looking at that, just added this Scripture to it when I was looking at it today. You know, to keep your heart fixed and trusting in the Lord, or give attention to the Word at yep. all times. It's like when you're in the road driving, you've got all kinds of signs and warning signs so that you can protect yourself and protect others. And I believe that as you tie, um, that's just one scripture, Proverbs chapter four, verse Proverbs chapter four, verse twenty through twenty-seven. I believe that that will help you to even get greater revelation on that, greater wisdom. These lessons on wisdom will open up doors for us to receive the knowledge of the secret things Big of doors. God. Yes. As Big we doors. read the word, study the word, meditate on the word, memorize the word, and share the word of God with others. From the beginning of lesson one, we stated that these revelations were established before the foundations of the earth, according to Deuteronomy 29 and 29. But I also think that you can add to that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and read verses 9 through 12 and I think that will add because it's talking about how, what God has revealed to us because we know that the secret things belong to us, belong to God, but the things that he revealed belongs to us. And when you look at... Gotta um, take ownership. You've got to take ownership and when you, I think, I'm not going to read it for the sake of time, but in your spare time, read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 through 12. I think it'll flow right along with Deuteronomy 20 and 29, so that you can get greater wisdom, because that's why Apostle Rock, the Lord is using him to bring all these lessons together so that we can be wise. Uh, nope. God wants us to be wise, yes. and he's using him, giving him the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding mm -hmm. to teach us and to train us to be wiser in these days. This divine revelation reveals that there are still things to be seen that have mm -hmm. not been seen, yes. things waiting to be heard that have not been heard, and things waiting to be done that, that have, have not, not been, been done. done yet. And I think that as you read this, you know, things are going to be revealed to you, and they're going to be revealed and as we tap into the wisdom of God. Amen. So we, Amen. Tonight, tonight yeah. we begin with Lesson 16, Illogical and even ridiculous. <laughs> so like, here comes Apostle with the beginning oh, of tonight's lesson. Oh, Illogical Lord. and even we, ridiculous. We might be in this for a while, all right? Okay. okay. Uh, illogical or even ridiculous. And, I, <laughs> and, and this comes from uh, lessons in the Bible uh, on wisdom to understand God because you need to know his ways. Yes. Uh, but also uh, personal lessons that I've gone through over the years that the Lord God have shared, you know, and uh, sometimes those things seem ridiculous that the Lord tell you to do, or they mm. seem illogical. They go against uh, the nature of what's before you, okay? But the lessons are all through the Word of God, and we have to learn through wisdom to, as we used the scripture last night about the man who, guess what, keeps authority over his soul, over his tongue, he can keep his soul. We were mm -hmm. talking about wisdom last mm -hmm. night. Well, this is a part of this that helps you to realize that even though the instruction that God may bring to you while you're growing in wisdom, that it may seem ridiculous in, in the presence of the circumstance you're going through. But scripture shows us that if the person is obedient, and this is what's absolutely necessary, even to those things that seem ridiculous, Mm -hmm. you're going you're gonna to receive some tremendous rewards right. because God's ways are not our ways. Yeah, he doesn't right. think the way we think about things and whatever. He sees total this where we see just a little part, okay? Thank so, God he's all wise yes, and all knowing. So, We're learning, but okay. he's all wise and all knowing. So I'm going to read this. This is something that I, uh, that I wrote about this particular lesson. And again, we might be in this. I don't know. It depends on what he wants to do, how he wants to do things, uh, because this is a very impacting lesson if you get this revelation, okay? Very impacting to everything that you believe in and want to do uh, in life. Sometimes what God tells you to do will appear illogical or, again, as we said, ridiculous, all right? 
And it may, may even deprive you of your immediate gratification, something that you want right now. You may have to wait, okay? Mm -hmm. And it may even wound your pride, okay? Because everybody's got some forms of some form of pride, mm -hmm. something, you know, you, right. you hold on to. God knows it's there, okay? Mm -hmm. So this may even wound your pride, okay? The way God does this, okay? There are times when an instruction will seem like it is totally unrelated, totally unrelated to the miracle you are pursuing. Remember Naaman? Mm -hmm. you, remember, you guys remember Naaman? Go wash in that dirty yeah, water. Yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> I, I thought sure he would come out and call and the sky would open up and stars would shine. Remember what he said, all that stuff? Something. And uh, But to go wash in a river. You know, and a, a dirty, dirty river, river at that. River at that. Yes. <laughs> Not a clean river, but yes. a dirty river at that. You yes. remember how he responded? You know, because receiving the miracle in that form of an atmosphere was totally like, was like, this is ridiculous to do this. Don't we have all these nice rivers over in Samaria? You know, and he said all those things, all right? <laughs> so there are times when an instruction will seem like it's totally unrelated to the miracle that you're pursuing. But hold on, Okay. Just hold on and follow and understand what we're saying tonight. When you go back and read many of these all through the scriptures from Genesis all the way through Revelation, you're going to see why it is so important to put your pride and all that other stuff aside and to listen at that illogical or ridiculous uh, <laughs> instruction. Okay? You're going, to, you're going to have to learn to do that because it's just a part of walking with the Lord. Okay? Now, when God gives an instruction... Now, this is what you got to get, all right? Realize that yesterday is not in your future, okay? You remember the story in the Second Kings chapter 7 when the Lord told Elisha, he says, tell them tomorrow about this time that everything is going to be sold in the city gate for this and that. It's going to be so cheap. What he was doing is he was alleviating yesterday. Mm -hmm. He was letting them know tomorrow ain't going to be nothing like yesterday, and yesterday will have nothing to do with your future. When you get to where I want you to be, nothing. Will, yesterday will have nothing to do with your future. Yesterday, all right? So God does not intend for it to appear yesterday in your life again. Whatever you're walking away from and you're walking toward God's instruction, he does not, he does not intend for you to go back that way, all right? Naaman, when he left, he did not go back to Samaria the way he came, all right? He didn't even think the way he thought when he left Samaria, when he went back because of what God did for him, all right? Now, this is why scripture tells us in Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, okay? And you can get that, that we are not to remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Mm -hmm. Because the promise is, and this is the promise, I will do a new thing, mm -hmm. all right? This is the promise, okay? Not you will do a new thing, God's gonna, gonna do, a new thing. do a new thing. See, the only thing that God wants you to do is to make him real. Mm -hmm. When you make him real, then guess what? He'll do the works that he always wants to do. But you got to make him real. Amen. Okay? You make him real through your prayer. You make him real through your praise and worship, through your testimony, through your loyalty. A lot of things. You make him real through the, uh, a lot of things. But you make him real, then he'll do the work that he's promised to do. Amen. Okay? And this is what Elisha was telling Naaman. He says, go down there. And do this. I'm making God real. I'm showing you how God will give you a ridiculous instruction. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to work for your good. But it's going to come out for your good. All right? Yeah. You guys with me? Yeah. So for new things to spring forth, this is something that you have to do. And this goes back to our definition of wisdom. You must unclutter your mind, unclutter your life, and unclutter your faith conversations and your faith talk. That's good. You've got to unclutter these things. You can't have so much conversation mixed in with your faith talk, okay, with your faith conversations. You can't have so many broken focuses in your mind, so many thoughts from different hats speaking to your head. You have to take some of those hats off if you're going to walk this way, okay, because there weren't many, only, the only people that these particular uh, works of God came through were people that were obedient to God. So you can't be disobedient to God and expect these kinds of things to happen. This is where it's getting very deep. Your feet are going to have to get down to the bottom of everything so that you can have a great stand and know that you're standing on the rock of Jesus Christ. All right? Amen. Amen. So, so there must be a listening ear in order to receive a still, small voice. you got to be able to hear. 
And you can't hear if everything is screaming in your head. You can't hear if you got so many things to do. You can't hear the still small voice is still the same still small voice that Elisha listened to when he ran from Jezebel, you know, mm -hmm. and God was talking to him and the earthquake came and all the fire came and all the things. And guess what? Then a still God, small voice came and God spoke to him. God was not in any of it. He's God was not in any, all of that noise and stuff that was going on. This is what he's showing you and I. Okay. So your journey, your journey. Okay. Our journey, everybody's journey has an imprint, okay, on you. Every inch of your journey is measured by Jesus. Not the foots, the foot, just the foot things, not the yards, not the miles, okay, not the days. Every inch of your journey is marked by Jesus being the author and the finisher of your faith. Every inch. Mm. So no matter how small that next step is, Jesus knows about it. Okay, he knows about it, all right? And so God will put a picture in you. And here we come back to these walking in these, fulfilling these directional arrows that we're talking about. God will put a picture in you that's so strong that it'll fill up your thought life. And it won't leave you. It'll shove out everything else in your life because it is a, it is a, a victory picture that God himself knows, all right? It's a picture of victory that God himself has seen. Before you get there, All right? You remember Noah when God told him to build the ark? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, God had already seen the other world. <laughs> yes. Okay. But the instruction, build an ark, be a man, maintain a zoo on a flood. <laughs> this, this, is, this is the instruction. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the instruction. For how many years did he build? And, and I'm sure that instruction was like, you sure this is what you want me to do, Lord? I mean, I've been working on this boat for a long keep time, building. you know, <laughs> and just keep on building. But he became a man who took care of a zoo on a flood, okay? But wow. the thing that you have to know about these kinds of instructions is that God has already seen the victory, Amen. okay? He has already seen the victory. So this is why when it's ridiculous or when it seems like it's so illogical, do it. Because you know what God is telling you to do, he's already seen the other side. See, this is the power part of walking in wisdom. Mm -hmm. That no matter what's going on around you, people can say this, look at this and say, oh, it ain't working, oh, it's not doing this or whatever. That doesn't, that doesn't matter with God because God's already seen what's going to take place. So when he tells you, you know, to step over there or step over here, He's already seen that, guess what, when you step over there, you're going to find a new piece of ground, you're going to find a new treasure, you're going to find a new pearl, you're going to find something that's so precious to you that you're going to be glad that you, that you followed those instructions. Amen. Noah was glad, <laughs> I can tell you that, okay, of all of that he went through, Noah was real glad. So because it's a picture of victory that God himself has seen, you got to know that when God tells you, all right, bring that child up and offer it on the altar, Guess what? God's got another one for me. He's got, a, he's got something else for me in store. Because guess what? He's already seen the other side of this. When the Lord tells you, you're going to give up your life and hang on the cross, guess what? The Lord God had already seen the other side of that. You're going to be called the resurrector. You're going to be the one who is resurrection in life. He's, he sees these pictures way before you and I get to these, these, these little you know, challenges that we have to go through. And so when he speaks to us, it is to tell us, the victory is just like I see it, all right? Because when God's words are spoken, remember John 6, 63, my words are spirit and life. Mm -hmm. So he's speaking to you about life, not death, not defeat, okay? Not lack and all of that. He's speaking to you about life. Mm -hmm. So when he told Abraham, you know, he said, you, by, this time, by this time of life next year, you're going to have a child. Sarah laughed. And what did the Lord say? <laughs> he said, why did you laugh? I didn't laugh. You know, <laughs> is anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard? You know, and he was just letting Abraham know, I've already seen your son that you've been believing for. Mm -hmm. So this is going to happen. Glory. Okay, this is, all, this is all he tells all of us. So when a ridiculous, you know, instruction come, don't think it's so ridiculous. Just know that it didn't come from you. It came from okay? the Lord. It came from the Lord. Okay. And what does it require of us to use our faith? Use our faith. <laughs> Through your faith walk, mm -hmm. you walk in what God has already seen. Yes. You know, when the Lord told me about the property down there, he says, I'm going to give you that ground over there. 
you know? And I was coming up 95 one day. He says, I'm gonna give you that ground over there. And when he said there was a him like, like he was sitting in the car with me, I went all the way across the highway, almost hit the guardrail on the other side. I came back, you know what I did? I'd go up there at nighttime and I'd walk that piece of property. I'd go up there during the daytime and walk that piece mm -hmm. of property, you know, and, and we bought another piece of property and I was going like, man, I mean, you know, the Lord told me he's going to give me that ground over there. He told me he's going to give me that ground over there. Here we've gone and bought another piece of property now, you know. Because we and thought then, it was going to be there. Yeah, we mm -hmm. thought it was going to be there. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know some when we got to get, getting ready for the construction on our property, we got to take all of that bad soft soil off the property, you know. Yes. And, and a guy walked in <laughs> and told me, he says, I got this, uh, you know, this place over here, and you can go and pull all this dirt out of here and bring it over here and put it over there. And when they first started bringing that dirt in there, the Lord spoke to me. He says, remember what I told you? And I said, what did you tell me? He says, I told you I was going to give you that ground. <laughs> he didn't tell me he was going to give me the land. He told me he was going to give me the ground. That's and that's what it did. And we hauled that ground from over there and brought it over there and put it on our land, okay, wow. to, yeah. to, to make everything happen for us. Okay, but this is the this is the power of these instructions that God give to you. You know wow. that when He says something, He's already seen the other side of it. Mm -hmm. All right, He's not waiting for something to happen as we walk by faith. He already knows it's what's going to happen it's when we start done. walking by faith it's because it's already done. done. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is what I'm trying to get to you guys tonight in these particular lessons that we're going to talk about tonight. It All right, is a finished work. so it yes. is a it is a win win situation. You know. So let's go to the book of Joshua real quick. This is a directional arrow. All right. God's already seen that picture of victory. He says, I watch over my word. I, in fact, he told Jeremiah, he says, I hasten my word to perform it. Okay. In Isaiah, he said, he says, listen, my thoughts are not your thoughts. <laughs> you with me? Joshua okay. chapter 6. Okay. What do you want? How much uh, verse 1 uh, through whatever. We're just going to talk some about it, about the okay. instructions. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Huh. <laughs> Sound hmm. like the pandemic. And the Lord said unto Joshua. <laughs> the pandemic. Sound like the you pandemic. Shut everybody yeah. shut out. Everybody shut out. Nobody yeah. was on the highway. Nobody going in the store. Nobody going anywhere. Now, because... Everybody shut up, right? <laughs> and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty hmm. men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all you men of war. And go round about the city once, thus shall I do six days. What? And seven priests shall bear before the ark, seven trumpets of rams, horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. What? And the priests shall <laughs> blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when they hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every That's man good. straight before him. I knew. I, excuse mm -hmm. me. Does that sound logical? <laughs> I mean, to to walk around a place every day, and then on Sunday you show up in your Sunday best, so you got to walk around it seven times. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to walk around it seven times, all right? And then guess what? You're not going to attack the building. No, no, no. Can't do that. You got to stand there and praise God. You got to stand there and shout. You got to stand and shout. Now, tell me that it do doesn't sound like an illogical uh, instruction for the day that they lived in. They just came across. They've been fighting, you know, and now God tells them, I don't want you to fight. I want you to, I want you to march. <laughs> I want you to march. <laughs> and even those people that were standing on the wall of Jericho, can you imagine what they thought? Of? Look, what are these people doing? Oh, leave them, leave them alone. They're not going to come into this city. Why? <laughs> what happened? Remember what the Lord told Joshua? He says, see, I have given you the city. Before he gave him the instructions. Tell him, see, he I said, have... see, I've already given it to you. All right? Mm. See, he's already seen already the victory seen. Yes, Lord. of that illogical instruction and even sometimes that ridiculous instruction that he's already given to you. And when it comes to you, you, you first thing you say, well, that ain't the Lord. The devil trying to trick me. <laughs> oh, come on now. Be with me tonight. Bear with me because this is going to get you through your faith walk and it's going to help you bring in all kinds of treasures in your life, okay? Because you have to understand the way God speaks to us. We don't always perceive things. Even when he gives us revelation, we can still not perceive it the way God wants it to be, to be interpreted. That's Men do it all the time. Wisdom. That's why you teach yes, on wisdom. Yes, that's right. That's, that's right. why we're teaching on wisdom, all right? Mm -hmm. 
so that you can know. Just go to the Lord and say, Lord, did you give me this instruction? You know, because this sounds like, you know, he'll talk to you about it. He'll, he'll reveal it to you through the word. He'll reveal it to you through a dream. He'll reveal it through other people speaking around you. You'll hear something, but something is going to happen, okay, to let you know, yes, that is my instruction, okay? And then your confidence is going to step in. And then, man, when, it, when that reward comes, you're going you're to be looking for those, for those illogical instructions. You, <laughs> you say, give me some give more. Give me some more. <laughs> <laughs> you go around like, hey, you got any more up there, Jesus? Because I need some, you know? All right? Directional arrow number two for the night in John chapter nine. I spoke about this one. I speak about this one all the time because this is, this, is, uh, this guy defended his miracle, you know, and he didn't let anybody talk any defeat and doubt around him about what had happened to him. John chapter 9, verse 1 through 41, it's the whole chapter, all right? This reveals uh, that Jesus instructed a blind man to wash the clay and the spit from his eyes, mm -hmm. but he had to go two miles away, mm -hmm. all right? He's got to travel through streets and whatever. This is a blind man. Nobody's holding him by the hand, you know, saying, come on, let's hurry up and get over here because Jesus sent away. No, 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 no. Jesus told him. So he's... He's personally involved his faith in the receiving and walking in what Jesus told him to do. Was it ridiculous to tell a blind man, go two miles through a city and find a pool and then wash? We have hindsight, <laughs> so we know that. Was, <laughs> was, it, was it ridiculous? I mean, if somebody, had told, you, if way, somebody yeah. had told you to go through the other side of Washington, D.C., you know, and find a coin on the ground and then put it in your pocket and then your bank account would explode, I mean, what would you be doing, you know? You'd be up there. What streets you want me to walk, Jesus? <laughs> you, you <start laughs> it'll be a ridiculous. <laughs> it would be a ridiculous instruction. But what would you be doing? Following because if you need the pain that's in your life, all right. This is what people don't understand about walking by faith. There's a persistent pain in your life that you've got to get rid of, and you will go to the extremes to get rid of that pain mm. if you're gonna walk by faith. Hallelujah. All right. Now, if you're just a mediocre person and you're just looking for somebody else to do it for you, then you just stay mediocre. But when it comes down to faith, your personal faith has to connect to God for God to deliver you from things. Amen. And this man, he took, he took Jesus' word at heart. It sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to do it. You know, it's going to be tough, but I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to walk into some people. I might meet the soldiers over there. They probably laugh at me. But guess what? I'll go through all of that laughing and that shame and all that embarrassment and all that stuff and all that, you know, those jokes and whatever about blind folk and whatever. I'll go through all of that. But guess what? I'm going to keep on walking until I find that pool. Yeah. See, because that was the instruction. Just like with Joshua, mm -hmm. we're going to keep on marching around the city like until the city. we get to that seventh day until what Jesus told us to do. Just like Abraham, I'm going to bring my son up to Mount Moriah just like God told me to do because I know God's going to do something. There's going to be a reward there. Just like Naaman, his servant, told him, said, wouldn't you have done something great? So get yourself on down to that river. He went on down to that river, and guess what he did? He dipped seven times in that river, and it says when he came up, he came up and he had the flesh of a baby, a child, mm -hmm. on, on this old man. See, I'm telling you, the instructions, they may seem ridiculous. They may seem illogical to your prideful mind and all that, but if you would stay with it, I'm telling you, God will reward you. See, because our minds can go like, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want anybody to see me doing this. I remember the day when I, my truck fell over. I was working up there in Northern Virginia, and my dump truck fell over. And the Lord told me, he says, go over there and lay your hands on that truck. And I walked over and put one hand on the truck because the guys were standing there, you know, and they was talking. And he told, he told me instantly, he says, what did I tell you to do? What did I tell you to do? You know, I'm, I'm sitting there looking at the guys talking and I'm like, I'm easing my hand on the truck, you know, because so they, because they, yeah, because they, they going to say something. Oh, he praying over his truck or whatever. The Lord told me, see, you want your truck fixed or do you want to let your truck sit here and be destroyed? And I put both of my hands on it and that truck straightened up the bars, the, the frame of that truck straightened up in front of those guys. So I'm telling you, the rewards of following that ridiculous instruction <laughs> Let me tell you something. You if God give it to well. you, if God give it to you, you better follow it. You better do exactly what he say because there's a great reward on the other end. Mm -hmm. We go to 1 Samuel. All right? 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Yeah. We ain't going we ain't going to finish this tonight. <laughs> 1 Samuel chapter 17. 
How many uh oh, verses? my wife didn't. My wife didn't pull out her dictionary here, so she can really lay something on you guys. No, I have a dictionary. <laughs> I was just. <laughs> oh, I was say, what dictionary? I was talking about all of this. Oh, that's all right. Funny. Come on, here, where we go? First Samuel. You can't even see that. <laughs> First Samuel chapter seventeen. Verse right? thirty-four. Thirty-four and thirty through thirty-seven. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, mm. and there came a lion mm. and a bear, and yeah. took a lamb out of the flock. Yep. And I went out after him and smote him Woo. and delivered him, delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I <laughs> caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, hmm. seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Woo-wee. My goodness. David was tight. Why was he tight? Because he had confidence, all right, that the instructions, regardless of how ridiculous, whatever the circumstances were, whatever the perplexities were, whatever the simplicities are, he knows that the instruction from God, the leading from God, will cause victory to come forth. Who would sin? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys this. Who would sin a little boy after a lion that has taken a lamb out of the flock? Right? Who would send a little boy after a bear that has already taken the, the, the lamb out of the flock, gone off with it? All right? Who would do that? Only the instruction of God would do that. The Holy Spirit was already speaking to David about doing things. And because David had followed those instructions, who would go? I mean, would you go after a lion <laughs> that, took one, of your, that took, one of your, took one of your lambs? <laughs> would you go after a bear? No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't dare do anything. You'd be going like, well, you know, so we're going to pray over that lamb because he probably was a good meal. You know, that's what you're going to do. That's, that's exactly what you're going to do. Just face it. But the instruction of God, as I said, it's an imprint that shoves all of the other thoughts out of your life. That the power of God comes in you. And you know that this is God talking to you. You know that, guess what, that this is going to work out because you've seen it work before. You've seen it work through scripture and the men and women that were just like you and I. They were not no supermen or no supernatural people that was doing all this. They were just men and women that God was raising up so that he could bring the Messiah into the world so that he could change the whole human race. And these were people that go through things just like you and I. They had to work, we got to work. They had, they had to eat, we got to eat. They had to raise their kids, we got to raise our kids. They had to be educated. Educated, we got to be educated. And yet David goes after a lion. And, a bear. and most people will say, well, he wasn't educated too much. Listen, let me tell you something. He had a, a, a logical instruction. Go after David because later on, you're going to have to go after the, the lambs in the, in the house of Israel. Go after. He used that, again, that practical lesson that became an eternal lesson. He's using that, and he sent him after that, and he was victorious over the lion. He was victorious over the bear, and David knew Goliath was just a, another treasure for him. And you know what, Apostle? He was able to convince Saul of that. Sure, yeah. Verse 37 said, Go. David said, Moreover, the Lord <laughs> that delivered me Go. out of the paw of the lion Go. and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this <laughs> Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, Go. and the Lord be with you. So he, he was he got able so, to convince he got, Saul was, as he well. He was so powerful in his speech and whatever. Yes. And in his spirit, he had that attitude, yes. that wise attitude that he knew that the Lord God was going to show him how to defeat Goliath. And so when he walks down on the field, guess what he does? He picks up five stones and he puts them in his pouch. Okay? He walks up to Goliath and he looks at him. He didn't run after him like he did the bear and the lion. Mm -hmm. He didn't go and jump on him and grab him by the beard and hit him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, God showed him exactly where Goliath's weak point was. Mm -hmm. See, showed him. He says, now you run to him and you deal with him just like you did the, the lion and the bear. See, God's speaking. See, everything is not directly shown us, but we can indirectly see the power of the Holy Spirit speaking to this boy in the things that he was doing, for him to walk down, pick up five stones, not thinking that Goliath could have thrown a spear or something at him. He walked right down in front of him and picked up five stones, put them in his pouch, and walked on over there and started talking to him when Goliath started talking to him. Can you imagine Goliath saying, boy, this <laughs> the, silly child, this little picking child. up rocks, he thinks rocks are going to hurt me, please. <laughs> yeah, but you notice again, David didn't do what he did with the lion and the bear. God didn't tell him, to go jump on top of him, and grab him by the head and break his neck. 
You know, you know he told him, said, nope, you got to watch this one. This is the way I want this one done. To let you know that the ridiculous or the illogical instructions of God, they are going to bring you victory no matter what. Every we got time. We got to go tonight. Every all right? Time. We got to go. We got to stop. We got to go. We got to stop because if I keep on going, I'm going to keep on getting into more and more and whatever. But, uh, That's a you good know, one to end on, Dave. We, yeah. <laughs> we want you guys to, to recognize, you know, that wisdom listens. It has an ear. And it listens to God because guess what? Daddy God and Jesus are one. Okay? And so whatever daddy God is revealing, Jesus is listening to it. And because we're in the body, when he speaks, his body hears. Just like you hear, your body hear when you speak. That's right. So when Jesus speaks, his body hears. Okay? And when we hear, we should obey. Because the ears are in the body. <laughs> God bless you guys. Listen, we're done tonight. My wife's going to close up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You guys have a great night. Yes, we'll see you tomorrow night. Same Amen. time, same word, same Holy Spirit. God bless. Good night, everybody. Amen. <laughs> have a great night. <laughs>